supervolcano eruptions are likely triggered externally. A new study finds there are over 20 supervolcanoes worldwide, northern, southern hemisphere, Europe, North America, and uh, a lot of them are dormant and waiting to happen, waiting to blow. A new study from Illinois Review, supervolcanoes likely triggered externally, the study finds. This is by Liz Alberg. Supervolcanoes are likely triggered externally when the rock around them cracks or collapses, according to a study led by Illinois geologist Patricia Gregg. Supervolcanoes, massive eruptions with potential global consequences, appear not to follow the conventional volcano mechanics of internal pressure building until the volcano blows. Instead, a new study finds such massive magma chambers might erupt when the roof above them cracks or collapses. Let's remember that we had a worldwide earthquake November 11th of last year, and nobody knows why it happened. It took place worldwide. It lasted a few minutes. And geologists seem to think it happened because a massive magma chamber could have collapsed and the earth rang like a bell for over two minutes. It's still a mystery, however. So they say that a new study finds that, that such massive magma chambers of supervolcanoes might erupt when the roof above them cracks or collapses. Knowledge of triggering mechanisms is crucial for monitoring supervolcano systems, including ones that lie beneath Yellowstone National Park and its neighboring supervolcano, the Long Valley Caldera of California. And these two supervolcanoes are neighboring each other, and they're both on the ring of fire. So according to the study led by Patricia Gregg, University of Illinois professor of geology, in collaboration with Professor Eric Grossfields of Pomona College and Professor Sean De Silva of Oregon State University. The study was published in the Journal of Volcanology and Geothermal Research. Greg also presented the findings this week in the annual meeting of the Geological Society of America. And this journal is uh, from 2000, and this article is from 2015. Quote, if we want to monitor supervolcanoes to determine if one is progressing towards eruption, we need better understanding of what triggers a super eruption, Greg said. It's very likely that super eruptions must be triggered by an external mechanism and not an internal mechanism, which makes them very different from typical smaller volcanoes that we monitor. And what comes to mind now as I'm reading this for you is the fact that NASA has a program to drill into the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano in order to make holes to try and cool the area. And now, of course, because of this finding, that may be a wrong thing to do. And that's another system that they want to use that method as well to cool the Campi Flegri of Italy. That's another supervolcano. You'll see yesterday's video on that. Going back to this article, a supervolcano is classed as more than 500 cubic kilometers of erupted magma volume. For comparison, Greg said, Mount St. Helens ejection about one cubic kilometer of material, so a supervolcano is more than 500 times larger. Quote, a typical volcano when it erupts can have lasting impacts across the globe, Greg said. We have seen that in Iceland, when we've had large ash eruptions that have completely disrupted air traffic across Europe, a super eruption takes that to the ninth, the, the nth degree. A new study's findings are contrary to a pair of papers published in the journal Nature Geoscience in 2014, the year before, that claim a link between eruption likelihood and magma buoyancy. The magma buoyancy hypothesis suggests that magma may be less dense than the rock surrounding it and therefore could push up against the roof like an ice cube bobbing in water, increasing the pressure within the chamber and triggering an eruption. Typically, when we think about how a volcanic eruption is triggered, 
We're taught that the pressure in the magma chamber increases until it causes an explosion and the volcano erupts, Greg said. Quote, this is the prevailing hypothesis for how eruptions are triggered. At supervolcanic sites, however, we don't see a lot of evidence of pressurization. When I incorporated buoyancy into my numerical models, I could not reproduce the 2014 studies, end quote. Greg's numerical model incorporates all of the physics, conserving mass, energy, and momentum to calculate what would happen if a large buoyant magma body were to form in the shallow crust. The model showed that even when the chamber was huge and the difference in density was very large between the magma and, he sur and the surrounding rock, an ultimately an unlikely scenario, buoyancy added very little pressure to the system. Quote, the fact that my numerical model was not agreeing with their analytical solution suggested that there was something missing from the analytical solution. So that prompted me to look closer. What they miss in the buoyancy model is Newtonian physics. The magma may push up, but the roof pushes back down." End quote. A new study found that the size of the magma chamber is a much greater factor in generating supervolcanic eruptions. The buoyancy study suggests that this correlation was due to having more material pushing up, but the Illinois-led study found that the size of the chamber affects the stability of the rock containing the chamber. Previous studies found that as a magma chamber expands, it pushes the roof up and forms faults, Greg said. As these very large magma chambers grow, the roof above may become unstable and it becomes easier to trigger an eruption through faulting or failure within the rock." End quote. According to the model, if a crack or fault in the roof penetrates the magma chamber, the magma uses the crack as a vent to shoot to the surface. This could trigger a chain reaction that unzips, quote unquote, the whole supervolcano. Next, Greg Group hopes to take advantage of the advanced computing facilities available at the University of Illinois, such as the Blue Waters Supercomputer at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. The researchers are working to create 4D models that track the evolution of the Long Valley Caldera of California. That's a supervolcano. They want to track the evolution of the Long Valley magma chamber over time in greater detail. Uh, that's another supervolcano that's about to blow as well. That's not, we're not just concentrating on Yellowstone, there are other supervolcanoes that are dangerous. Quote, if we see a correlation between magma chamber size and the ability to erupt, it's important to know if supervolcano eruptions are triggered by internal factors or by foundering and faulting in the roof. It may mean that we have to monitor these volcanoes differently, Greg said. If the trigger is an external force, whether it be an earthquake or a fault, then we should look at seismicity. What types of faults are being developed? What is the stability of the roof? And what kinds of activities are happening in the surface that could cause faulting? End quote. This, this is from the National Science Foundation supporting this work, and it's on illinois.ed. I'll leave a link below for you for this. So here we see in conclusion that the surrounding earthquakes and faults that take place could uh, somehow cause the magma roof to collapse and that would, as they're saying here, spur the supervolcano eruption. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. 
So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.